Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 991. The countdown continues towards the big 1000. And the topic today is about connection. About how do you get connected? What do you maybe not be doing the right way? And what this connection thing is all about. So let's have some fun, shall we? And by the way, this is actually planting seeds because I'll tell you about something's happening tomorrow night after my broadcast tomorrow that you may want to tune in for. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So first of all, let's talk about what connection is. For most people, connection is a sense of being validated by somebody else or feeling that they can be in some way enmeshed with somebody else. Because sometimes connection is not so clean as it could be. So let me talk about the negative connection format first. If, if format is the right word. For some people, being connected means you are so enmeshed with the other person you've lost your own identity. That's the extreme case. Now, most people don't do that, but some people do. If you've been one of those, you may not recognize the feeling of basically being so immersed that you're in love so much that you don't feel like there's anything else besides the other person. An extremely horrendous way of doing codependency, so I'm not going to talk about that one. There's also, other, there's also a spectrum from that to a different place, which is so detached that you desire, or excuse me, that you don't let anybody else in at all. And oftentimes it comes from the extremes of being wounded or hurt or traumatic experiences, being abused, stuff like that, can basically have your guard up so high that it's impossible to let anybody in. Especially the, the challenge that is, is when you want to let somebody in, you can't do it. because you're, and, it's, and it is a can't because you don't know how to get there. Well, yes, it's not a choice, it's a can't, yeah, we can be clear. So that's the extremes on the spectrum. So you go from one extreme, which is basically so enmeshed, so connected, so immersed that you're basically underwater the whole time. And the other extreme is where you're basically so disconnected, unwilling to be connected because you've been hurt so badly in the past, you don't let somebody in. And so it's almost an impossibility for you to do that. So I'm going to speak to maybe both of those. Let me just see where I'm going to go with that. So connection sounds so simple, but I just gave you some pretty wide spectrum flavors of those extremes. Connection really, in the essence of what I believe it to be, is that place of being so intimate with some other person, usually romantically, but it can be family, it can be even you can even co-workers if you're in that sort of relationship, that sort of paradigm, but it can be clean. But you're so connected to that person, that there's more of a unity. The challenge with this is that we keep thinking that when we're so immersed in the other person, that's unity and it's not. It's actually giving away everything. It's kind of the, to the total epitome of codependency on the extreme scale. What I'm talking about when I talk about connection is unity. And what I mean by that is, is when you are, well, let me actually let you know and say, hmm, I'm really saying I'm drawing a triangle here. <laughs> So I'm, I'm giving you, a, I'm, I'm giving you a framework. Instead of being a straight line um, spectrum, actually that's two sides of a triangle. The third point up here. So again, one is so enmeshed that you've basically fallen down a pit you'll never get out of because you're so connected to the other person you can't even find yourself. The other side of that triangle is you're so detached because you're afraid of being hurt. I've been through that one, okay? So you're not letting nobody in. The, the pinnacle or the ultimate form of connection, at least under my understanding, is what I mentioned is unity. I realize I didn't mention that. Intention, rewind, wrong teeth in today. What I meant, didn't mean to say that at that point, but that's really the third point. So you've got fully meshed, totally disconnected, and then unity. And the unity, again, which is the, which is the pinnacle of the triangle, so to speak, is really where you are so together with that other person, there's just one, ends, one um, I'm going to carefully say this, because it's not codependent. Unity is a place of such alignment that you feel like you have total understanding of each other that's the pinnacle for me of connection so then you've got this triangle diagram I've sort of drawn for you on the screen with my fingers fingers in the middle of that is what most people think about as connection it's some it's a blend of all three in a way but it's a lot of it's tied to how we feel connected and it's vitally important for a healthy relationship by the way not necessarily the pinnacle the ultimate that's another level of elevated connection but I'm talking about just being connected that in a way it's healthy so let's speak to those two anchor points on the bottom of the triangle first. One side again is so enmeshed you don't know where you start and the other person be, where you start stop the other person begins. That is codependency. It's different from unity, very different from unity. Codependency is such a place where you're so enmeshed you have no control anymore. You have no discernment of your own boundaries. So it's not very healthy. So the way back from that, I'm gonna give you a short I'm gonna give you shortcuts for these right now because I'm gonna go in much more detail. Um, I've done, I've gone in much more detail in other talks and I'll be talking about this more tomorrow night and I'll tell you about that in a moment. Stay tuned for that. So one side of the spectrum, you're so 
um, it being so meshed, this side, yeah, this side, <laughs> I remember a triangle was drawn, that you want to pull back from that place, which means you've got to find your own boundaries. You've got to really discover who you really are and own your space. You can detach from some other people and not be so hooked into their stuff. That's one. Hang on. I realize I've got my phone here. I want to make sure I've got it on vibrate so it doesn't interrupt my call, my talk. Right. On the other side, back in this side, which is the so detached you're not able to connect to you so you're so afraid. To be blunt, you need to get some help. Because if you're dealing with such a traumatic experience that makes you so distant, unable to connect, you want to get some professional support, whether it's from somebody like myself as a coach counselor or from somebody who's a therapist. Because that stuff is usually so buried in deep that to get out of it, it's going to require some external help. Not easy to do on your own, just to be clear. So those two things are two extremes. And I'm giving you very, very brief tips on how to get out of them. So the first one, again, is to really like find your boundaries, get back to yourself and own your space, which is this side. So I'm watching the screen, which I'm on the right side. This side is, is really getting clear about, truthfully, is to really know that it's safe to come out again, safe to connect, safe to be in, um, in rapport in a way. But again, I'm not going to give you all the details of how to. We'll talk about that tomorrow. So this is just this is this is this is this is temptation I'm giving you. <laughs> the third way, which is unity, I'm not going to touch because, frankly, when you get to that level, you've elevated beyond anything else in relationship. But let me start to get back to the middle again. So connection. Connection really is the is the is the the um, the baseline, the surface, the the um, what's I'm looking for. It's the platform, that's a good word. Connection is basically the platform through which intimacy happens. So connection and intimacy are very tied together in my language, in my understanding. When you're connected to somebody on a place that is really clean and very connect and very intimate, that's when great things can happen if it's a relationship of any sort, romantic or otherwise. So those two work together really well. So now giving you the sense of the triangle with a point in the middle. <laughs> Again, in enmeshed, disconnected unified and connection and they're all parts of the same spectrum so this is um, the ultimate expression of connection and different flavors I didn't I didn't actually have this diagram in my head it just came through as I was talking so welcome to my mind <laughs> the way it works so this is a, a, a understanding that what's not working for you could be one of those two things at the bottom because that's really the the lower levels where you're not able to clarify what, what connection is Connection, first of all, let me some more clarity about connection itself. Connection is, is a clean thing, meaning when you connect, there's no agenda, there's no hooks, there's no tie-ins, there's no requirements, there's no um, shoulds, have tos, stuff attached to them. Connection is just connection. Clean, usually, and simple. If you're putting out connection, which is like communication in a way, if you're putting out connection that's going to attach to a lot of shoulds, have tos, must, um, desires, hooks, that sort of stuff, then it's not clean which is putting you basically in the spectrum between the two base ones. I'm realizing I'm building this, this, this three-dimensional thing in my head. Stay with me, it will work, it makes sense. So recognizing what the connection is, when you elevate connection from the base level, which I've already talked about those three things now, again, attachment, in, in, in mesh, enmeshment, detachment, it does make sense. Above that is real connection, which is clean and um, Detach, unattached, being being willing to connect without any requirements. That's healthy. So from when you're creating connection, this is this is part of the connection relationship. But the big piece I haven't told you yet. <laughs> the big piece of this is true connection is inside. Yeah, you might have guessed I was gonna go there because I talked about so much in my past few weeks about self-love and my self-love meditation. Yes, I'll put the link in the comments, you can check it out at the end. But the recognition is that when you connect to yourself, you start to um, eliminate the need to connect to somebody outside of yourself. And it's, and it's going to sound simplistic in a way, but it's a paradigm shift for a lot of people. It's understanding who they are and what they're about is more about self-awareness, self-respect, self-connection than anything else out there in the world. And in fact, if you do that focus to work with yourself, to connect to who you really are, to connect to all of your levels or your skills or your chakras, we want to get fancy, <laughs> and to the divinity of who you are. I talked about that yesterday, I think, did I? I did a Facebook Live about it somewhere along the way, about connecting to the higher place, to that spirit within you. When you do that, then you have a tap, you're tapped into a source that is basically 
infinite. And it doesn't go away because the connection doesn't require anybody else. It's all inside of you. That power, that authority, that autonomy you carry with yourself is a potent place to come from. It makes any connection out there easier because you're already connected to yourself. There's another thought that came through. What was it? Shoot. It was like, that was so good. And there's another piece and it's like, it dropped away. Okay. <coughs> Welcome to my uh, <laughs> random thoughts sometimes. They just show up in the weirdest ways. So the cleanest piece I want to give you on this reminder is that the connection starts within. And talk about self-love because that's one of the anchor points and it's also one of the easy ways to get into connect to who you really are. And connected to who you really are is where it really happens. So the clue, the answer, the solution to connection is to look within. Now my self-love guided meditation uses the mirror because that's the fastest way to look through your own eyes into the eyes in the camera. Or in the, excuse me, in the mirror to see yourself. I'm looking in the camera. When you connect to that part inside yourself that's so deep, so rich, so full, then that need for connection is satisfied. And then you look to connect outside there, it's much easier to play and dance with that outside. Without agenda, without attachment, without requirement. And it's a healthy way to connect. So I hope you're making sense. It's kind of like um, a dance, but it's more about just aligning your lens towards yourself versus somebody else. And if you're watching my talks, I'm passionate about you finding your way home to yourself first. Because, as I mentioned, if you're single, that was, yes that was yesterday's talk. It's been a blur this weekend. When you're single, it's the healthiest time to discover who you really are. It's hard to do it in a relationship when you're in mesh with somebody else, unless you take time apart to do the investigation. But frankly, if you do look at yourself clearly, authentically, and own who you are, you become more, I believe, caring about who you are, more loving about who you are, and then you become more attractive. So the side effect is you become more attractive to a relationship if you're single. So connection is one of those avenues through which you can really discover that for yourself. This is the thing though, you gotta be willing to do it. So I've given you some clues about the other pieces of the puzzle, the other parts of the triangle, but I wanna make sure you get this and take it home with you, bring it home with you, which is to really focus on yourself. I'm, I'm, I know I've been talking this for a lot lately because so many people are caught up in the need to get relationship out there, which is what their connection is miswired for. You gotta start connecting to yourself first, relying on yourself, loving yourself, appreciating yourself first, because when you do that, then connection out there becomes easier becomes more transparent and becomes more detached. You can have it more easily. Of course, most people don't learn that lesson. So hopefully watching this, you'll get the lesson and take it home with you. Again, this is part of another teaching which I'm talking about, which is tomorrow night. So I'll give you a little clue about that. So first of all, my self-love guided meditation will be in the comments. You can click on that, download, you can buy it, download it and use it. It's got my voice guiding you in an AMP and meditation, which for some people rocks their world, for other people it doesn't. <laughs> That'll be in the comments. Um, but what this is seeding, what I'm talking about, is tomorrow night, after my Facebook Live tomorrow, which will be at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I'll tell you all those replay links in a moment, at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, um, my friend Katie my, and Carlson and myself are leading a, a Zoom call, and I'll put the link in the comments for the, for the event page on Facebook so you can find it. Um, and you can join us, sign up for the call, when you have to sign up, just, just opt in, just say yes in the event, and then join us on the Zoom call, which will be a video conference call online. Um, at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, etc., etc., And we're talking about this amongst other things. It's actually about love, intimacy, and connection, about f guiding yourself back to yourself. It's essentially a taste of what we're, li we're launching in the end of the month, the beginning of March now, which is, our, which is our Inspired Love Mastery Mastermind. So I'm giving you a little advance notice. So the link will be in the comments. Join us tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, which I do at 5 p.m. Before that, so this can be a back-to-back -back thing, um, a reminder to you, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at, um, on, excuse me, seven days a week, every day, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The um, time is usually 5 p.m. Pacific time, and this is the countdown, because my last, my thousandth broadcast, which may be my last one, we'll see what happens. I may be doing some weekly ones after that. I don't think I'm gonna do daily after I hit 1,000, which will be next week, so stay tuned for that. This is, again, episode number 991, so I'm getting closer, nine more to go. Um, and so what we'll say with that. Oh, if you haven't seen my brief broadcast before, why not? <laughs> if you haven't watched them, you can watch my replays. And I keep two backups intentionally. One of them is on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, where Facebook keeps them archived but not visible. Yeah, really annoying. So you can see about two or 300 of them there, but not all 990 of them. So 
First of all, like my page, which is again is Barry Selby author on Facebook. And then if you want to watch all the replays, just to be sure you can find them, go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Every single one of these broadcasts is listed from newest to oldest. Um, I make sure they're all there so you can find them. You can search through the titles, look for certain words that speak to you, certain titles that stand out for you, and can watch them as you at your leisure. And uh, have fun with that. So again, reminder, the self-love meditation will be in the link in the comments. I'll also put a link in the comments for the event tomorrow night. You can join us, please. And uh, that's about it. If you have any questions or comments about this, please let me know. I'll respond when I sign off. Message me if you have any questions, you want to get some more help. Connection's a good thing when you do it in a healthy way. And that's what I hope you get inspired by. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.